Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to tonight's second half. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dog Man Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads that I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. They are appreciated and they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's second half, shall we? All right, folks, so tonight's interview tonight's second half is an interview with a friend of mine who has since passed and it really this interview really means a lot to me uh to hear her voice because she was just an amazing amazing person and she really was all about proving that these creatures out here exist she sued the state of California, not for money, but just for them to admit that Bigfoot and other cryptids are real. Uh, she died suddenly a couple years ago, and I really do miss this person, Claudia Ackley. Because of Claudia, I was able to speak to two people that I really looked up to and still do. Uh, one being Bob Gimlin from the Patterson Gimlin film. I got to speak to him via the telephone and Josh Gates via the telephone. Uh, in our interview together, I'm going to share some pictures of uh, Claudia with both of those people. And I would never be able to speak to those people if it wasn't for her. Actually, right after the this interview, uh, right after the initial interview, her and I stayed on the phone and she actually called Bob Gimlin. Uh, he was suffering, still suffering from dementia, but it was earlier in the day. And uh, so I was able to just get a couple minutes. I mean, that's it. It was a couple minutes. It wasn't like we had this long, drawn conversation, but it was truly amazing. So this, this interview really does mean a lot to me, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, throughout this interview, there's going to be photos uh, with Claudia and Josh Gates, Bob Gimlin, and some photos that she had taken around her home. Uh, she was one of the first people that I ever spoke to in regards to these creatures possibly being demonic and using portals and such. Um, there's a picture of something in her house that she took and you can see it looking out at her. And then there's a couple pictures of some dog men, one trying to get into her home that was taken via a uh, security cam. And there's one right up to her window at her house and a couple other behind him. It's just really amazing. And I really miss her. Uh, I really think that there is some sort of, uh, not conspiracy, but something is going on. You know, uh, researchers and people in this community that get a certain level of uh, not fame, but 
a certain level of being a pain in the ass, I think, the government silences. And I can count on both hands people that that has happened to. And Claudia is one of them. So let's get into it. All right, everybody. Tonight, I have a very special guest with us. Um, I am super excited to have her with us. Uh, I was prior to even just having an hour long conversation before we did this interview, but now I'm just blown away. I've spoken with Claudia Ackley for an hour and I've just, I'm off my wits end. I mean, she's met some people from Gilman to Josh Gates to Adam Davies to everybody. And she's gone on Bigfoot research hunts with these guys and it's it's amazing and I'm I just the hour I've spent with her I'm blown away and I am so happy that she's gonna blow you guys away too so Claudia how are you I'm good and I want to say thank you so much to everybody who's taking your time to listen to my story and I hope that we can come to a conclusion of helping each other out with this crazy Bigfoot dogman world right Jeff? absolutely absolutely <laughs> And I was talking to Claudia, and she's going to continue her lawsuit. Um, and I said, listen, if there's ever a time that you need a petition signed, that I will put it on my channel, and I'm sure that all of my faithful family here will sign it. So Thank you. But, that means a Yeah, and no. And I'll take you up on that, for what, sure. Whatever I can do for you, honestly. So Thank you. right now, what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to, I'm going to give you the floor and you can share with ev everybody. And... Okay. So, Thank you so much. Yep. I'm going to dance around your floor then. So, right. um, well, I want to say thank you to everybody for, again, listening to my story. And I have one goal here and it's to help others. That's all I want. Um, I'm a mom and, um, I'm, you know, just a average, I, I worked in the hospital for um, 17 years. I'm in the medical profession. Um, you know, when you grow up, you want to be a doctor or a nurse or a veterinarian, whatever, but you don't ever like when you're growing up, you don't say, I want to be a Bigfoot researcher or whatever. I never wanted this and I didn't ask for this, but God brought it to my attention for sure. And I believe that my sighting was for a reason and a purpose and my purpose is to help others and warn others that these things are out there and they can be very, very dangerous. I'm glad that some people have had great encounters and, you know, um, this is of course just my advice and, and my, my experiences, what I've been through, which means nothing. It's just, I'm just another person. Um, I, I'll start telling you what happened like 1997. Um, I just graduated from high school. I had some roommates. We went to Yosemite national park and we hiked up upper falls. There's a lower falls and an upper falls. And what happened was um, we were the only dummies that were out there. Uh, <laughs> people would climb up that mountain and then take pictures and then go back down. They never spent the night. But we brought our tents and everything, hoping to stay a couple nights up there. Well, the first night we put our tent up, and unfortunately, we heard the worst growl ever. It, it literally sent shivers down our spine. And what happened was... Uh, I was with my roommates and I, we all woke up from that growl. And what happened was we unzipped the tent and we see something bipedal walking into the wood line. So we were like, what the fuck was that? We didn't know what it was, but we were terrified. And back then there was no cell phones and we were unexperienced, no weapons. And we were thinking, was it a bear? What was it? So for many, many years, I had that in my head. Like, what was it that we saw? So a friend of mine brought up the attention, like, what was the scariest moment in your life? And I said, well, like, actually, in 1997, we went to Yosemite, what I just told you guys. And uh, it was pretty traumatic. And she's like, well, was it a Bigfoot? And I literally, like, chuckled. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? And she's like, yeah, research it. So I did. So I started getting to learn about the whole Bigfoot world, you know, and um, didn't have a Facebook account at the time. So what I did is I became friends with a woman named Barbara, and she has a YouTube channel called Barb and Gabby, and we started chatting through YouTube, and she invited me to come to her area, and she said, I would love to have you. So I went up there with my ex-husband, and I went there not to 
think I'm going to see one. I went there to learn about the species. I wanted to know, you know, everything about them. But I told Barbara, I don't want you to show me old prints. I want to find my own evidence because I need this for myself to know if they're real or not. So we went up there and it was a great, great time. Her hospitality was wonderful. Um, and to make the long story longer, I mean, I experienced everything from rocks being thrown to uh, screams at night to we've, I found so many footprints that I casted. And the, the greatest thing that happened was we were hiking and um, we, we were walking straight and she stopped us and she said, you know, sometimes when I come up on this trail, my dog Gabby stops and stares in this direction. So we all went to that direction uh, to the left of the trail. Well, as we were like going up there, she started explaining there's, there's a tree that's been like twisted and you could see me on the camera, but I'm like looking and that had that sense that something is watching you, that little voice that's telling you that. I start looking around and sure enough, like 75 feet from me, there was a Sasquatch. He was about five feet tall. He was up on the tree holding with one hand. And as soon as we locked eyes, he jumped off the tree, ran uh, bipedal two steps and then went quadrupedal into the woods away from us. And at that moment, I was like, oh, my God, they are real. Oh, my God. And then she had it on video. The crazy thing about that video was that I saw this creature flesh and blood. I saw its hair. I saw its skin as it was running away from us, his big black almond eyes. And she, uh, on her video, it looks cloaked, like you can't see it, like the predator. So that video is called the cloaked video. So that day totally changed my life because, you know, you go through life where at times you were insecure. Once I got older, I'm a mom now, I became more secure. And I, I thought to myself, Life is so short. Like, there's so much that we don't even know about. And I want to make it the best that I can. So now I got really involved into the Sasquatch species. And um, I was in a very unhealthy marriage for, you know, 17 years. And I thought, you know what, this isn't right. I got divorced, not because of Bigfoot, but this brought my attention that life is short. And I want to mm -hmm. learn more about them. It, it, was a, it was a hobby and he was against it. So I ended up divorcing him. And um my it was it was all for the better <laughs> um i lost like 130 pounds start hiking intensely like in the rugged terrains of, of oregon not at to, night not to cut you off really quick but during that yeah. divorce um there was an interesting thing that happened at court can you share that with us because i i was blown away when you shared that with us with me yeah so when i tell you more about my story um and i knew that this was going to happen but when i had encounters with my daughter my ex-husband took me to court, and even though he was with me when I had the sighting with Barb and Gabby, um, he took me to court to try to say that I'm a crazy, unfit mother. So what happened was he brought in an attorney. I didn't. I came alone to defend myself, and uh, his, his attorney started with, Your Honor, um, you know, Mrs. Ackley has this unusual uh, hobby, which is Bigfoot with quotation marks. He put quotation marks up in the sky. And we think she's unfit. She needs mental help. She truly believes that these creatures exist. And, like, my mouth and my heart was beating, thinking, oh, God, please don't let them tell me they're going to take my kids away. That was, like, terrifying for me. And the judge takes off her glasses, and she looks at both of us. And here I'm about to vomit inside my mouth. because I'm like, please, God. And she says, she looks at the both of them, and she said, you know, I saw last weekend a documentary on the sasquatch species and i believe in them so are you calling me unfit and crazy <laughs> <laughs> so i thought that was great you yeah. know and i'm and at that point i felt like god's hand on my shoulder <clears throat> saying i got you you know it was it was a great moment in my life yeah almost absolutely. like thank the support so um after i had the the barb and gabby uh, for five years six years i was just researching getting to know people got a facebook account um, of course, being a mom, that's my number one goal is being a mother. Um, I'm so blessed to have two beautiful girls that are healthy and happy. And um, what happened was uh, we moved to the mountains in Los Angeles. It's very expensive and it's a lot cheaper to live up in the mountains than in the city. So I found a house for us to live in. And uh, we we went, I we, we moved next to a trail. And I, I told my daughters after school one day, they finished their homework and um, I said, do you guys want to go on a hike? I don't want them on their cell phones constantly on TikTok or whatever. 
And they said, yeah, that, that would be fun. And I just got off work. I had my hospice shoes on. I work with hospice patients. And I said, okay, but it's 6.30 at night. We have to kind of hurry because it's getting dark. And we don't want to be up in the woods at, in, in, in the dark. So they were excited. So on the way there, it's about a two-minute drive in my car. I told my daughters, okay, you guys are not experienced hikers. If you see a bear, you don't run from it. Cougars get you from the front, back. They can jump off a tree. They're very sneaky and quiet. Always watch your surroundings and never, ever show fear to anything, ever. And I said, if I tell you guys to hold hands, run, and don't look back, you need to listen. And they were rolling their eyes at that point, saying, oh, my gosh, Mom. So uh, what happened was we started walking on the trail. Now, I just brought my cell phone and bear spray. And here, I usually go into the woods with my boots and then prepared. But I was just going to take a small little walk with them in, in the woods, you know, just a simple hike. And the first thing that we started noticing is there was this huge tree that's been blocked. So we have to walk around the tree. Then about 200 feet from there, there's another tree that's blocking the trail. So now there's two trees blocking the trail, all within 200 feet from each other. So at this point, we were walking and there's a curve. Well, my youngest daughter was in the front. My teenage daughter was in the middle and I was in the back. I'm in the back for obvious reasons to watch out for them. And I see my daughter, the youngest, her name is Jenna. She was bouncing, singing. She walks around the tree, the third tree now that's been blocking the trail. So I'm telling you this because they give us signs that we just totally ignore. So um, I see her now at this point, she stops very quickly, puts her hands down and just stares straight, doesn't even, doesn't move. And at this moment, I'm actually taking a picture of my teenage daughter who's posing for the picture. And I notice my daughter her demeanor so I'm watching my teenage daughter now and now she turns the corner and now she's frozen so as a mom you know mama bears you don't want to mess with mama bears I knew something was bad and something was wrong so what I did is I run as fast as I can in front of them about 20 feet and to my disbelief there was a Sasquatch right there and I was like no 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 this isn't really happening and there's so many things that go through your mind. Those of you who have not ever seen one, like there's just all these thoughts that race through your mind. Like, oh my God, his skin is gray. Oh my God, that are just like zooming through your head. And what happened was I was in so much shock saying, no, this is not really happening. So I started walking up towards them and in my head, something said, don't get any closer. So I stopped. So at this point, I'm in front of my daughters and I'm looking at the creature and I'm staring at them straight to straight. He looks at me and then he looks at my kids. And then I don't like the way he looked at my daughters. And they're, you know, 14 and 11. So when I saw him looking at my daughters, I whooped at him. And I was telling him two things. One, as I know about your kind. And two was don't look at my children, look at me. So um, now I know that I'm not going to win, of course, <laughs> with the Sasquatch in me. But he'll know I was there if he tried to hurt my children. He will know I was there. So... I told my daughters, do not run, do not run, listen to me, hold hands and start walking back to the car, turn around right now. So as they turn around, I'm still standing face to face with him, not letting my guard down. I'm not showing fear. Um, I even actually put my hands up in the air and I said, I, I come in peace, but I had my, my bear spray in my hand to ready to go. So we go back to the car and my, my youngest daughter, she like Peter pants because it's, it's such a traumatic moment when you're told all your life that monsters aren't real, they are. So basically, um, you know, I've, I've been doing this now for like at that moment, at that time for six years. So for me to have an encounter and um, my boyfriend was at the house visiting us and he was there, he didn't go on the walk with us. When we came back, um, you know, he said, how was your walk? What's wrong? And I said, Ed, we ran into Sasquatch. And he started to laugh. And I said, no, no, like, I'm, I'm not kidding. And he's like, what? He, and, I, and I said, they were huge, Ed. There was one big one. And he said, uh, no, no, no. It must be. And my daughter interrupts us. And she says, like, I videotaped it, like, twice. And I'm, like, shocked. I felt like somebody slapped me in the face. Because I had no idea at this point that she videotaped behind me. I'm wearing the red shirt, if you guys see the video. So, um so he says, send, send me the, the video. And so he gets on his laptop. And sure enough, he's like, well, there's definitely a man. And he's definitely looking at you. And I said, no, Ed, he was like a thousand pound man with hair all over. And there was, and then my daughter tells me that there was two of them that ran right next to her. 
She said one was a, a, a bigger one that was looking at her, giving her a dirty look. As it was running forward, it was looking at her to the right. And I think to myself, like, when I run, I have to look at every step I take so I don't trip or fall over something. These things are so stealthy that they just run without even looking at where they're stepping. So she said the one behind it was a lot younger, like like a younger one. It was like the mother or younger. And she said that it ran behind the big guy, the, the, the Alice and Al. So I had no inclination that there were three of them at that time that showed themselves. I was just aware of the one. So um, what happened was I called the fishing game after like, so I took Ed the next day and I said, look, Ed, he was 30 feet up on a tree. And Ed's like, there's no way a human can climb this tree. And he saw the V, the creatures, um, you can see his head. It's, there's a V on the tree, the wood, and you can see his head in between the, the V. So basically, um, I called a fishing game because I was thinking to myself, as a mother, as a human being, if I was walking out of that trail that day with my daughters and I saw a young family with children, I'm going to say, don't go out there. There's Bigfoot. They're going to say she's fucking whacked. She's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to change things. I want things that I want people to be aware and have a choice to go out there knowing what's really out there. There's a lot more than just Sasquatch. You know, there's also the dog man, as you know, Jeff. But um, I called a fishing game and I called. And at first, you don't know who to call. Do you call 911? Do you call the Forest Service? Do you call fishing game? So I just called the dispatch and I said, non emergency number. This was like a week later. And I said, hi, I'd like to report a Sasquatch. And like, <laughs> it's quiet on the phone. It's like, uh, you want to report a, a Sasquatch? I said, yes. And she said, uh, okay, well, I don't know who to contact. I said, neither do I. So I said, look, like, I, I need to tell someone because the public's in danger around here. So she said, okay, answer your phone. Somebody will be calling you within the next five minutes or so. Sure enough, the Forest Service called me right away. That phone was right away. And she, she called me. She said, so you had a, a sighting of a Sasquatch? I said, I sure did. And I said, I have it on video. I've got a cast. It was 22 inches, five toes. And I said, my daughters and I, we encountered them. And there was three of them. And I'm afraid for the public. So she comes, she gets my address. And she comes, she looks at my, my cell phone. And I'm showing her my daughter's video that she took. And she pointed out, is that him? Yes, that's him. Really so quick, I, told, I don't mean I, to cut you off, but I just remember where you are. Um, this is for the subscribers that are listening. Uh, okay. If you want to see the video or the picture she's discussing right now, if you Google Claudia Ackley, um, California sighting or suing California, the news article will come up and there, the, the pictures are in there and the video as well. So, all right, I just needed to put that in. Sorry. No. Perfect. Thank you for doing that. So um, she comes and she said to me, that was interesting. She said, my supervisor's on the other end. He wants to be here, but he can't. So I'm going to call him and let him know what you're telling me. And I thought that was interesting. So sure enough, like she watched the video over and over and over again. She messages her supervisor and we're all sitting there waiting for his response. She looks at me and she looks at her cell phone and she takes a sigh. And she looks at me and she says, you saw a bear. I said, no, honey, I did not see a bear. I know what bears look like. It was not a bear. And she said, well, maybe it was like a cinnamon bear. No, it was not a cinnamon. We went back and forth, back and forth. And I felt completely stupid and like an idiot. Like, how dare you? Like, I'm telling you everything. I'm, I'm passionate of what I'm telling you. I've interviewed my children. So she started telling me, well, you know, a gorilla or no, a orangutan escaped from the Big Bear Zoo. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe you saw the orangutan. I said, no, it wasn't the orangutan. There was three of them. They were huge and they were bipedal. At least two of them were. So her and I were going back and forth, but I'm being very respectful, but to the point. And I, I said, let me ask you now a question. She goes, okay. And she goes, I said, has anybody ever reported a Sasquatch around here? And she said, no. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, within the five minutes that you got to my house, you researched that? You answered that quickly? That's interesting. Second question I'd like to ask you, is that anybody ever been hurt in that trail? She said, yes. Oh, I'm like, what happened there? She said that a, a scout group came and camped out there and they were doing their badge thing and they were told not to bring food in the tent. A little boy brought food in his tent and a bear attacked him. This is what she said to me. Very 
very, very, very bad. It was a bear that got inside of his tent and took his food and, and hurt him really bad. And I looked at her. I'm like, was it a bear? Was it? And she kind of like, you know, and I said, you know, I understand that we all have bills to pay. We have to feed our families. But ethically and morally, what you do to people is wrong. It's really wrong. It's already hard enough to make this phone call. And then when you come out here and make me feel stupid, tell me we saw a bear. I said, no, it's wrong. And she didn't even offer to go and like check out the area. Nothing, just nothing. Like it was a waste of a call for her. So at that point, I was really devastated. I was like, oh, my God, like, this is wrong, you know, and here I'm a mom. And, and let me just tell you guys, when that is happening to you guys and, and your innocence, of, well, for children, their innocence got taken away. My daughter's innocence that day was taken from them. And that's not right. Because my daughter later came and told me, my little one, mom, you lied to me. And I said, what did I lie to you about? She said, you told me monsters aren't real, but they are. And I'm like, I don't know. How do you answer that to your child? Well, I know, honey, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why do you answer that? So my daughters at this point want nothing to do with the woods ever, ever again. So, and financially it was hard because I had to finally move out of there, the mountains because they couldn't handle living in the mountains. So I got so upset. I was depressed for like a week. I'm human. I cry. I get mad. I, I laugh. I get happy. And I was listening to, uh, to Wes on Sasquatch Chronicles and a man named Todd Standing. I heard his interview, how he's suing the government for Canada for acknowledging the species. So he was so like passionate that I'm like, we've been friends for a while on Facebook. So Todd Standing did a documentary on Netflix called Discovering Bigfoot. So I messaged him. We've been friends for a couple of years. I saw like the Les Stroud and, and him going out to the woods, but I never, um, I never really talked to him, but I, I messaged him. I said, look, like I'm a mom. I had a sighting with my daughter. She videotaped it. I called the fishing game. They laughed at me and I don't want to be laughed at. I want to help people. And right away he called me. He's like, what can I do to help you? And I'm like, well, we were able to talk and he's like, I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll fly down to you. He's from Canada on his own dime. He came, um, his wife was pregnant, a high risk pregnancy. He left everything to come and help me file in the state of California. Now, a lot of the big court world, we all know it's not great. <laughs> a lot people fight and, oh, he's a hoaxer and he's a liar and he's this. Well, let me tell you guys, I, I'm very loyal to the people that are good to me. And I'm not going to make judgment of Todd Standing's videos because I wasn't there. And um, But I could say one thing about Todd is that he spent his own dime coming to help me file in court. And I asked him questions like, okay, like in court, how does this work? How does that work? He was able to educate me on what to do. And he came with me and we filed together. We were like we were a team, you know, and um, so because I've got a lot of criticism, Jeff, of me um, bringing Todd Standing into this whole thing. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Believe me, I'm I'm yeah. I got my own hate group, too. So <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine with me. I just I want to just continue with my goal, you know. But so I filed in court and I got a court date, which was set for like March something. And um and uh. Todd went back home and sure enough, like I started getting a lot of phone calls from the New York post and like this man called me from the New York post. And he says to me, like, I like to interview you. And he started getting, he's all, do you have DNA? And I said, I do. And he's like, I need, what is it? I need to have a copy of it. And I said, no, it's not even here at my house. To be honest with you, I'm not that dumb. Hmm. So, um, Later, I found out that he wasn't even a New York Post because the New York Post called me like a couple of days later, really being the New York Post. So at that point, that was an eye opener that people are, are, are trying to get me. And they were. I was followed by the government. Um, I mean, many times they would come and they would follow me very close. Now, I live in the woods. So when I would leave and you go down the mountain, there's no railing. <laughs> you can be pushed off pretty easy off the mountain. And I'm not stupid. People want me to shut up and I'm not going to. I'm going to continue doing what I need to do to protect people. And people think, well, you don't need, what are you going to, I'm like, I want to try at least to do something with the government because the fishing games mission statement is to protect the fish and the game. So why, why, why should they continue to lie to us? They're not doing their job. That's, that's, that's their job. So basically, um, I got an attorney and he did, he, he was, he called Todd standing. He said, look, like I want to take her case. 
His name is Bobby Garcia. I'm from Texas, but I will get permission to go and represent her in the state of California. Um, I'm a huge enthusiast. I want to do this. I, I have 200 employees I, that you know work under me. And so he sounded really optimistic. And I was like, oh, and I go, Todd, why hasn't he called me? I'm the one that's filing, not you. So basically, Todd's like, well, I guess he feels more realistically if he talks to you, then he has to take your case. But he wants to get some information about us first, which I thought was very bad. And I said, don't send him any information as far as DNA or anything. Don't send him anything. So after he told Todd, look, if she goes into court with what she has right now, I had to go to court and write, um, you know, to file everything of what, why I'm suing. Just to let you guys know, I'm not suing for a dime. I don't want a cent. And I'm not suing to be famous because you look like a nut to 98% of the public. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this to help others. So they are optional to go out there in the woods knowing that there's bears, mountain lions, Sasquatch, dogman, not just bears and mountain lions that can harm you. So what happened, um, Bobby Garcia told Todd she needs to stop the case. If she doesn't, I can't represent her. So so what I did is I put I stopped the case until it's pending right now. It's um without prejudice, which means that I just stopped it for now. And it was actually better because now I have so much more evidence as Jeff, you know, that I've sent you the pictures of what I've gotten, you know, on, on yeah. my camera, yeah. I have security cameras around my house and that's where the creatures, uh, we live close to our encounter and that's where they were at. That's their home. So to make my long story longer, I forgot where I was at, but, uh, I stopped, I stopped the case and I told Todd, so now what? He's like, well, Bobby's going to be contacting you. He needs permission to to represent you in the state of California. And then he has to actually have an office for me to come in in the state of California. It's not just like him signing the piece of paper. It's kind of. Uh, and so finally, Bobby calls me. He's like, thank you for stopping this court case. Thank you. I would love to represent you. I'd like to ask you some questions. And I was so grateful and I was so thankful to him. And I was like, thank you. And he was going to do it for free. So. I um I started talking to him and he said, look, Claudia, I will represent you, but you have to remember something. The legal words, the legal world does does turn, but it turns very slowly. But you have to be patient. Please be patient. We'll get this done. We have to get all the evidence and everything together. And I'm like, OK, OK, you know, you're my attorney. OK, so like months would go by. I didn't hear from him months. So I would call his office. Can I speak with Mr. Garcia? Okay. Le left 20 messages. Nothing. Nothing. So I found out. I said, I want a copy of him because I was told by his secretary that he put in a request to have um, me, like, permission for him to represent me from, from Texas to California. I said, can I have a copy of that? And they never sent me any copy. So basically what it was is that he was lying. He didn't want me to go to court or whatever. I don't know if he works for the government. I don't know. But he is a true attorney in Texas. I found that out. So, but it's okay because it just gave me more time to to research because what he did was, he's like, if she goes into court, she's going to be laughed at and they're just going to close the case. But there's a part of me that I feel that even if I don't win, which it's going to be very hard to win a court case without a body. I get that. I'm not stupid. But if I go in there and I say, look, there's thousands, if I have like, you know, a petition, Jeff, like we were talking, I've got pictures, I've got DNA, well, we can get a body, but what is it that if I, like I was telling you, Jeff, if I murdered someone in front of 50,000 people, 50,000 people saw me murder someone and I went to court and every 50,000 people went to testify, they would find me guilty of murder. Oh, yeah. So why is this different? This, it's not different. So it's time that someone does something. So even if I don't win, maybe in 10 years, five years, 100 years, somebody will go to court about the same thing and say, look, she tried this. Let's try this. You know, we're screaming here as an American citizen. Please help us, government. Please. There's a lot of us that are suffering right now. Please help us. And they're like, Shh, cricket, cricket. You know, it's not OK. So, um I, I got, it. let me just tell you guys, it's been hell, like the last five years, three years, two years, whatever it's been, um, with uh, my ex-husband for like a year, going back to court. We were fighting about, like, he was trying to take out spousal support. 
Well, she could afford to file a lawsuit in California, and then she doesn't need spousal support. It's all that. Stuff. I was married 20 years, you know. I, I didn't get my education because I put my ex-husband through his education. So I had to go every month to court and to prove that I'm not an unfit mother. And my daughters were interviewed and everything. It was really intense. And the weird thing is, is that the judge wanted to talk to the girls herself in the her chambers. And that's very unusual for a judge to talk to the child. Usually they send them to the counseling department or whatever. And I thought that was very interesting. But um, I've had people following me. I've had um, my ex-husband taking me to court. Um, a lot of people calling me, telling me that they're people that they're really not. And I just, I'm really careful now of, of what, what happens. And just so you guys know, um, we are going to file a lawsuit back again in California. And this time I have mountains of evidence. I've got Bob Gimlin, who's going to testify for me. We have Jeff Meldrum, Dr. Meldrum. He's going to go in there with, um, you know, what he knows about the Sasquatch species. I'm going to have witnesses from the state of California who've had, like, face-to-face -face encounters with the dog man and the, the Sasquatch species. And to explain to the courts, this is why we're doing this. Do you see us suffering? Many of us are suffering from this. And it's not okay. And how many more people have to go? The government doesn't care about who goes missing. They don't care. Because I believe that the government, what they cannot control, they will not acknowledge. Yes. And I believe that firmly. Yeah. You know, so people wonder, why doesn't government say anything? You know, well, because they can't control it. Why would they acknowledge something they can't control? Was it money? Probably, too. I don't know. So I don't have the answers for that. But basically, um, now, now fast forward now uh, to uh, my encounter was 2017. Now we're at 21, right? A couple of days. Yep. So let me just tell you guys, I have to be very careful with what I say, but I first felt that these things were animalistic, but the intelligence of these things are absolutely mind blowing. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that I've seen those people talk about their sightings with these lights that, are like flashlights that fly around the woods. What are they? I've seen them myself, and they're always with areas of population of sightings of Bigfoot or Dogman. Yeah. Are they related? I feel they are, but I, I nobody knows. But for some reason, when people would say to me, they know where you, they'll they'll follow your scents. They'll they'll know they know they'll follow you home. They do, <laughs> and I have to say, I have pictures of one trying to get into my house. And Jeff has the picture. It's trying to get into my uh, dining room. And uh, I got very clear pictures of them. And one inside my house that broke into my house two years ago on Thanksgiving, which was completely traumatizing for me. Um, for those of you who, like, say, well, they're not aggressive and they're not this, and that's great for you guys. But for us that have had horrible experiences or feel as a parent that we have the right to go out to the woods knowing what's out there, um, that's great, but let us do our thing too, you know? And so I can't say too much about my experiences, but the, I I've seen the dog man and I've had the encounters with them. I've had the Sasquatch encounters. There's many Sasquatches. I found 12 structures behind my house. They were huge. Like they got burnt trees, that whole area. There's no burnt trees, but there's this huge log that's been like burnt that they made into an X really it's very strange. Yeah. All, all the stuff that I've, encountered you know there was so um, the there was something you were talking to me about and i just i i thought it was interesting about the um when you called the police officers oh yeah yeah and they were talking yeah. about the the tracks can you share that or, yeah okay. so oh i have to tell you something important so when we first moved up there once we had the encounter my daughters and i they started like trying to get into the house and I'm freaking out thinking, oh, my gosh, this is not happening. So I call 911 and I'm like, please help me. There's intruders trying to break into my house. So sure enough, they would come, you know, and sure enough, they would disappear. They would go away or whatever. So the police got there and they're like looking around the woods and they're like, no, we don't see anything. Well, then I was like <laughs> I was standing around the corner from my house and they were looking in the woods and I had dirt down there. And then I hear one of the police officers go like, Joe. Oh my God, look at this print. And I'm, and he's like, shh, like she's right over there. Like, shh. And I'm like, you don't have to shush. Cricket, cricket. I know they're out there. There's no, like, you don't have to be bullshit. I, let's, let's just, 
let's just try to find them. We all know that they exist. Like, let's not try to. And they were looking at all the prints that were on the ground, acknowledging them. So then I called them, like, I think it was two times. They were trying, the creatures were trying to break into my house. So basically, um, the third time was Thanksgiving. I think it was three or four times that I called them. I don't remember, but there were intense times that I called. I don't just call 911 because one walked by the window. It wasn't like that at all. But they were, they were, and I know they can if they want to break in. They could break a wall down if they want to. I get it. But they were trying to make us be afraid, and they were. It worked, you know. But um, when I when they did break into the house on Thanksgiving Day, and I called nine one one, I swear to you, this is what she says to me: "You call nine one one too much. I'm sorry, the weather's too bad. We can't send anybody to help you yet, just yet. I hope you feel better. Click. This is a nine one one phone call that I'm going to get a copy of. Wow. So they didn't send help for me. Well, four days later, I'm in the intensive care unit. And that, that's all I have to say about that. But blood all over the house. The paramedics come finally four days later and they see the blood and they're like, why did you wait so long to call us? And I said, I didn't. I called you guys. But she said, I called 911 too much. And he was like, oh, that is so, so wrong. And then like the, the fire department, the, the uh, fire truck, it was like first the paramedics and then the fire truck comes behind it. And I can hear him go, Captain. And let me tell you what she just told me right now. And I heard him, I heard him talking as they were loading me onto the, the the ambulance. But I was in the intensive care for about a week, just very sick from, from the creatures. So those of you who tell me that they won't hurt you, don't tell me that. Because I can have, I could show you pictures that I've even showed Jeff and me in the ICU. It's not fun at all. So. Yeah. It's definitely not. And, you know, I, to me, you're very courageous and thank you when I shared <clears throat> excuse me when I shared the news article that I had read and in the comment section there was just so many people supporting you know and being supportive of you because very you know, blessed. You're, you're not you're not suing for anything other than the truth you know uh, yeah to, to where if you were a hoaxer or a fraud, you would be like, well, I want them to admit and I want a new home and I want to have this, but yeah, not money at all. And you, you really have kind of paved a, a new road for people because, you know, it's, you're taking down the detour, the detour signs right now as your go. And I hope uh, you've got my backing and you've got oh, thank you. hopefully everybody that listens to my channel's backing as well. Um, you know, like I, just... I want to tell you guys something that's so important. A lot of people have, people are different. Some people don't want to talk about things and that's okay. It's all about people. But for those of you who tell a story about their encounter and you get laughed at, fuck them. They're not your friends from number one. And, and the second thing is, um, be confident into what you believe, what you saw. Don't be afraid of what people think. Because if you do, if you had an, let's say you haven't had one. Another thing I wanted to say is if you guys have not seen one, but you want to, I promise you, you would regret it. So if you're out there looking for it, I know people are dying to see it. It's not going to stop people from going into the woods, what I'm saying. But if I had a chance, maybe not because I'm, I want people to live. Maybe I, I'm an ex, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want, I, I, I'm glad this happened to me because I want to help people. But for those of you who aren't going to file a lawsuit or whatever, please think twice before you knock on something's door because you might not know who's going to answer the door. Right. And it might not be beautiful and nice. You know what I mean? The big teddy bear hug at all. Yeah. But um, another thing too is um, as, as, uh, as people being judgmental, this is just a, like a little, like, um, I thought of this scenario, like, you know, the lady who sued McDonald's because she got burned from coffee. You <laughs> yeah. Remember that story? Yeah. Have you heard that story? So people were like, oh my gosh, can you believe she sued McDonald's for like a billion dollars and because she got burnt because coffee's hot. Oh my gosh. Well, they don't know her side of the story. Her side of the story is she was elderly. She ordered her coffee, but the coffee pot was broken. And don't quote me on the exact whatever it is, but. The coffee machine was broken where it overheated like six times what it's supposed to or whatever, seven times. So when they handed her the cup, she put it between her legs 
because she drives a stick shift car, the coffee melted the cup and burnt her so bad that she got third degree burns. That's why she sued the, the, the McDonald's to get the plastic surgery and stuff, all that stuff that she needed to get done. But people judge just by hearing one thing. Oh, she's suing because uh, Bigfoot. They don't even know my whole side of the story. They don't see uh, my daughters at night. I'm next to their bed, holding their hand, telling them that they're not going to get eaten. Right. You guys don't see those things. You know what I mean? So be very careful when you guys make judgment of others. And I'm not saying all everybody. I'm just saying those bad few apples out there yeah. <laughs> yeah. that I don't waste my time or energy with at all. Yeah. So how are your daughters the, now with the outside? How are they more they're, accepting or they don't want to talk about it at all. Can't they never them. want to go into the woods ever again, ever. And, um, but now they've grown up to be healthy girls. You know, my, my oldest daughter, she's an adult now. She's 18 and my 15 year old and they're happy kids, but they want the city. They're like, no. And they don't want me talking about Bigfoot. My daughter one day came crying to me and she said, mom, they're so bad. Please stop. Please stop. And see, at the beginning of all this, I said, would you guys be okay with me filing a lawsuit so we can help other people? Because if it's going to be too hard for you for school, people making fun of you, I won't do it. You guys are my number one priority, but I want to know. I said, Oh no, Sue, Sue. Yeah. You know, and now that they've gotten older, they were like, mom, it's, it's please stop. Like, and I'm like, no, I can't. It's something that God has given me. It's a mission right. to help other people. I'm also starting a national PTSD group throughout the United States and it's going to be free to the public. What I'm doing is I'm picking one person from each state. And that person's responsible to pick cities. So they can go to like a quotation mark AA meeting. So people can go and experience and talk about their experiences without feeling the ridicule, the judgment, or, you know, just support. Yeah. And people are not allowed to throw their opinions or whatever. You know how the Bigfoot community can be yucky. Um, so that's my huge, uh, that's my second goal. Um, as far as the lawsuit and, and the PTSD groups, and it's going to be free to the public. You don't have to bring a cent, just bring yourself. And for those of you who have had great encounters and you know that they're going to, the meetings are going to be coming up, please go and support other people that have had bad encounters because we're all in this together. Yeah. So and I believe that's helping each other. The majority of people that are here on my channel yeah. are supportive. Like I honestly oh. encourage I especially another one of the big reasons why I wanted you on is because so many men are apt to share their encounter because, you know, it's the manly thing to do. And, you know, yeah. but a lot of women have encounters and just bottle it up. And, yeah. you know, I have <clears throat> a subscriber who has been with my channel forever um, and she was not the first, but one of the first to share her Bigfoot encounter. And, you know, her, her name is Jane. And I use Jane when I speak to other females. I say, listen, you know, like, remember her encounter and, and how she shared it and all the support that she got. I'm like, you'll get that support. We got a very supportive community here. Um, yeah. So... You know, I, I, what you're doing is great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are negative, she's not going to win. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's already a win-win situation. Just because even if I don't win, it's going to open people's eyes. So let's say that somebody laughs at me and they hear my story. And then they go camping the next summer and they have an encounter with one. They'll go, oh, my God, she's right. Let's do something about it. Let's change. Because, you know, like the whole Bigfoot topic is becoming really popular. Yeah. People are so really like you know what i noticed too jeff is when i went to oregon and stuff and i would talk about an encounter somebody would say oh where did you have yours but like if you go to different states like southern california where i'm from they'll say what kind of mental hospital did you just get out of right. what medication are you on you know it's all different region has a lot to do with it too yeah yeah it's an environmental That's except you know like uh more acceptance with the environment you know yeah but I, I don't believe that these things um, – now, like, if I talk a little bit about the species itself, I don't – they're extremely – this is my opinion, of course, which means nothing, my experiences. I've seen them super intelligent. Um, 
I've actually seen like two of them kind of back and forth to each other, talking to each other. Um, they have their own language. They have, I feel in my heart and I've seen it for myself. They have abilities that we can't understand. Mm. And that's all I have to say about that. It's just, they have many abilities that we just cannot understand. Yeah. And maybe I was thinking, maybe that's why the government's hiding. I don't know, you know, but it is what it is. Well, but I mean, if, we've talked about it numerous yeah. times and I've had subscribers that, you know, have had the encounters where it's there one second and gone the next. And, you know, Absolutely. yeah, we have like a, it's, this community is good. I mean, and it's not me, it's the people that are here, you know, yeah. that are more accepting and more just willing to share what they've seen. Um, it's just, it's, 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 it's great. You know, I it really is. am happy how my community has just grown and the people here have are, really made it. I mean, they you've really made it. And I want to be on behalf of all of us. We want to say thank you to you because without you opening your channel, we don't have this place to go to, to talk about our stories. So please give yourself a hug and a pat on the back because you're so great to talk to. You're easy. You're non-judgmental. You're fun. It's like, we want to say thank you to you, Jeff, for your hard time and work and effort because you've made a difference. Even in my life, in the last week that I've gotten to know you. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. You know? Thank you thank very you. much. I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, yeah. One really cool thing. I try, now, I'm trying to figure out how to share some of the pictures that you shared with me. And I'm going to, okay. I'll figure it out by the end of the video. But there's okay. one picture that I want, I was blown away with because you... And I'm just, I'm, I'm stoked about this because you met Josh Gates and it's yeah. amazing. Can you talk about how you met him? Just like a little bit of what you did with oh, him or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, during this lawsuit stuff, uh, I had a lot of people calling me a lot. It was kind of crazy. And there was a person named, uh, well, I can't say his name, but he contacted me. He's like, hi, like I'm a producer. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm a mom. And he's like, um, you know, I would love to, can you show us and kind of explain to us? And I want, I want to speak out, not for publicity, but for knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah. And I want people to be aware, even if they don't believe in it, just listen to it. So it's the first step, baby steps, you know? And um, he said, I said, okay, well, what show? He's like, well, we're kind of just putting the show together. We really don't have a name for a show. He wasn't really telling me much. And I'm like, well, let me, send me your credentials. I want to see who you really are. Because I'm not going to just take you out knowing, I don't even know, you could be the working for the government and kill me. I have no idea who you are. So he sent me his credentials, and then we decided to meet. And sure enough, like, uh, he calls me. He's like, we're lost. Like, can you help us out? <laughs> so the mountains are kind of hard to find, the houses and stuff. So I said, okay. So I went. I found them, and <laughs> I drove my car, and they were lost. And I get out of the car, and there was, like, there was like seven cars. And I'm like, wait, I only invited, like, you and another person. <laughs> like, who is all these people? So I turn around and this guy gets out of the car and he looks so familiar and he like checks out his hand. He goes, hi, I'm, I'm Josh. I'm Josh. And I start laughing. I'm like, Josh Gates. Oh my gosh. Like I had no idea that you were the one that's wanting to see where everything happened and wants my story. And I said, thank you so much. It's so an honor to meet you. But let me tell you guys, he is so nice and he's so fun. Like he is on camera. He's like that in real life. Just, yeah. And you and he, you know, Mr. Gilman. Yeah, I mean, huh? you've met the amount of people that you have met in this in the community is amazing. Like, there's I'll share the if I can, yeah, the of picture course. of Josh with you, and then yeah. Mr. Gilman is. I love him to death. I yeah. mean, it's there he is with his cowboy hat on, and there you <laughs> are, and it's just holy you cow! Like it's the holy grail of pictures, you know, like he's. And and he's even gotten ridicule in the in in the Absolutely. you know, and people are saying you know up until, I mean God that pitch that that movie the video was forty something fifty years ago and they're still calling it a hoax. I know? know it's crazy. And, and if you see him, you can see how genuine he is. Just like, oh Claudia, I mean that day was like if it was if it happened yesterday. He's like. Oh, Claudia, if you saw how scared I was, like shaking. Like when he says things like that, you know, you know what I mean. It's just, yeah. You could just 
feel his vibes that he he saw what he saw and there's no doubt in my mind at all at all and he's so kind and loving and open and you know he went through hell like for years yeah so yeah. he kept saying claudia you're gonna go through hell but you'll make out one day it's gonna be all better for for all of us so well, the, thing, the persecution you know, back then was just i mean the the persecution now is nothing to where it was in the 70s you know i know and, Oh my goodness, I cannot imagine the just the hell of going through that because it, it like like you said, it's it's more accepted now. Dogman, there's dogman communities, there's Sasquatch communities, there's reptilian communities and you know, it's people want the truth and and it's accepted and back then there was nothing, you know. <laughs> right. Well, we pay our taxes, we deserve the truth. We we have the right to know what's out there to protect our own kind. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Or, you know, it's like, that's so wrong. Absolutely. To me, that's like, I don't know. Especially as parents, you know? I mean, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure that if my parents, when I was a Boy Scout, and they sent me into the, the heart of the Adirondacks, where there's a, not a house for 100 miles, if they if they had any idea that these things were out there, I wouldn't have been going out in the woods you know like it's yeah it's i would terrifying. recommend for everybody I and mean, i'm sure you guys that are hunters or like uh you know don't go by yourself please please and also if you moms go out there with your children do not lay don't turn for a second it just takes a second mm. with your with your children a second absolutely. please watch your babies close in the woods so absolutely now it's um, easy to when you're on vacation and barbecuing and you know it's easy to, to get distracted so yeah, yeah but a lot of missing people and they're mm -hmm. going where where it's bad it's just really bad there is a picture that i sent jeff of me walking towards a dogman that's standing there and i start to float up in the air that's what i, I wanted to bring that up can you talk about that i know there's certain things yeah. that you can and can't talk about but yeah well i mean i have video footage of it and stuff so i have security cameras around my house and I have a shed that's 12 feet tall. Now, this shed is it's pretty big, you know, and what happened was I saw the dog man standing on the corner of the shed. So what I did is I start walking up to it, rebuking it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't recommend anybody to ever do that. Don't ever do stupid things like I've done. But what happened was I got attacked by something. I, Jeff, I, I, I don't even know what it is, some creature. And then as I get closer to the dog man, I start to float. You could actually see my feet up in the air. This is a, also on security footage. It's not my camera. I can't hoax it. It's on my security footage. And um, for some reason, I turned white. Like, I had colorful clothing on. And right before that, I did that. I You could see me on the video with my colorful clothes. But the moment I start walking in, which I believe is a portal that opens up and closes. And I believe in my heart, in my opinion only, that when people go into a port, you don't see it with your naked eye. Once you're in it and they decide to close it, you go with them. Once they're done having fun with you, they dump you off near water or tree. And that's why I feel that the search and rescue dogs walk around in circles because that's where you were last smelled and that's where you basically left yeah. when the portal closes. So I can't explain it. I don't know. I, nobody's an expert. I don't know. Yeah, so. there's, I've, He'll share those pictures with you guys. You can see it as yeah, well. I'm going to figure out the best way to do it. And um, like I said to you, I'll put it in the outro of how to do it. I'm debating on putting it on my channel's Facebook or doing just a community post. Um, but If you can write a comment, you can help Jeff out. That'd be great. What you guys think would be easier. I, you guys want yeah, pictures. Yeah, I, I think I'll do it on... I, I think it'll be easiest for um the community post that way they don't have to you leave youtube they can just go over to it and see it from there okay um but there was someone i was speaking to just recently and we were talking about these portals and you know they <clears throat> they're they lead somewhere but they're almost like a hallway you know what i mean and yeah this person he they brought up a, a very interesting topic because not only does the sasquatch or 
the dog man or whatever use them but there's other things in those portals that are hunting and they're not hunting us they're hunting what's coming out of those like sasquatch and that thing and other things so there's things worse than what we have here in there you know right. and i was just like you know when he said what do you mean there's things hunting sasquatch in there and he's like holy shit you know i mean just yeah and it's dimensions because we just don't know we don't know skinwalker don't. ranch is a perfect there, example I, I met the family there that lives that lives on the ranch right now oh really and it's such a creepy place you guys it's so crazy there we went there we spent the day there and then we we we, we went home we started driving got in the car regular car okay we start driving away and we hear a bird chirping inside the car we're like is there birds we like pulled over checked to see if there was birds stuck in the car windows were rolled up of course and we can't explain it it's just crazy stuff like that that happens yeah so, I mean, and it's i told just... walker people please be careful don't be alone especially the woman don't be alone yeah. don't be careful it's sasquatch too i mean there's yeah. dog man sasquatch there yeah but i believe like i've i was questioning myself like I, i've got the dna but still doesn't answer the question is this alien oriented are these ground crews for the earth they're massively big they're strong they could see us very easily but we can't see them so are they created by the aliens to be the ground earth because a little gray that's four feet isn't going to do well in the woods right right or is it nephilim now i've been face to face where i've rebuked the name of jesus christ and it fled and i'm thinking if this was this alien why would it flee from rebuking it so now I'm kind of drawn to like Nephilim, you know, type thing. Is it Nephilim? Is it so many questions, but not enough answers? There's a lot of theory that agrees with you on that. I mean, there's literally when you, if you stick around the channel for a while and you read the comment section, you will see there's, you know, there's a lot of people that listen to the channel that are convinced wholeheartedly that these things are biblical and they're they're yeah. coming you know for a reason um yeah i just well, this, all this has brought me so like i used to question about god like honestly i was like you know there's so much suffering in the world like is there god are you real or you not now i'm like oh there is a god but just person but this definitely opened my eyes and to have a, a relationship with christ because when you see it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, if I seen the devil, there has to be a God. Yeah. I tell myself, you know, Absolutely. But my faith is strong. Keep your faith strong, you guys, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, um, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit more, but we'll end the interview right now. Um, is there anything that you would like to end the interview with to everybody? I just uh, thank you for taking your guys' time to listen to my story. Um, it's all very nice to meet everybody. Um, I'm going to start the PTSD group soon. Um, I have some health issues right now, but I'm trying to overcome them. And I'm going to continue the court case. I'm just waiting to look for a great attorney to represent me. <laughs> but I want to say thank you and lots of love. Be kind to everybody everywhere. And please give without expecting anything in return. Anyway, thank you guys so much. And it's so nice to meet you all. Thank you. Um, and when you yeah. start the PTS group, send me the link so I, I can will. put it on the channel. And if you ever need a petition Thanks. signed, send me and I'll start it and I'll we'll get that going for you too. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Thank you. God bless. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. And there you have it, folks. I hope you all enjoyed tonight's second half as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Man, I really do miss... I It was awesome having Claudia as a friend. I, you know, I remember when she passed away, there was uh, channels on YouTube that were in the cryptid community that never really knew her, but they even paid homage to her because she was such an amazing person, um, which is great. It's, it's truly amazing, you know, to not know a person, but to know of them and still, you know, make a video in memory of that person is awesome. Uh, 
she was just, <laughs> I actually still have her number programmed in my phone. Um, <laughs> anyway, I really think there is something, you know, you, you piss the government off too much or you keep poking the bear and they silence you. I don't know. She was, I talked to her a couple months before she passed and it was real, really sad. I actually met her through Donald Coleman Jr. So anyway, thank you for supporting the channel. It is your support that helps this channel to continue to grow and go. And honestly, what gives us all a place and a chance to share this experiences and theories judgment free. Everyone's treated with the respect we all deserve. And that is all because of you. So thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.